wish you all happy international women's day uh, international women's day observance introduced by even wo as given a theme for reflection that is digit all innovation on technology for gender equality that is a theme given by the even wo to, to reflect on 8th march that is today when international communities celebrate working women's day it is very important many years ago at the beginning of this uh, 20th century there were struggles by women who were fighting for their safety in their workplace and they wanted to specify the daily hour of their working hours and after a great struggle uh, they have got little freedom and therefore they wanted to celebrate march 8th as the international women's day but on that particular day three women were shot dead by police when they wanted to march uh, towards um, their venue where they have arranged a big procession and a big get to their gatherings to demand for the rights in order to remember uh, the sacrifices of three women on 8th march they have established this day called international women's day as per our lenten program we are asked to reflect on roman 2 24 uh, that is very much related with the gender equality and the legalist community there is no human touch but they were talking about only law pharisees and other teachers of the law in jewish community they were only upholding laws and things related with the laws there was no human touch there was no kindness romans 224 as it is written god's name is blasphemed among the gentiles because of you he wanted to conclude with this verse before that he was explaining how they were indifferent in terms of practicing the laws that they were learning or listening or studying he gives so many examples from verse 17 to 23 chapter 2 romans chapter 2 from 17 to 23 he was explaining in detail how they were not practicing the laws that they learned from the teachers of the law in judaism in jewish community when paul was ministering in around palestine and asia minor that is turkey in many occasions our lord encountered with pharisees then he was actually demanding justice from these teachers of the law and pharisees since they were advocating only laws of the bible be studied properly and they wanted to uphold the importance of the law but not practicing the law matthew chapter 23 he says that matthew 23 verse 23 matthew 23 verse 23 oh to you teachers of the law and pharisees you hypocrites 
you give a tenth of your spices mint dill and cumin but you have neglected the more important matters of the law justice mercy and faithfulness you have neglected very important part of the law whereas you were very particular to offer one tenth of all agriculture produce even the least from the least of things that you use every day and you were very particular to pay one tenth of that mint we we hardly buy for rupees 10 or rupees 15 mint even in that mint they pay one tenth from the least they wanted to pay one tenth which means they were praising themselves that we are very religious and we want to offer one tenth but lord wanted to explain them stating that you have neglected very important part of the law that is justice mercy and faithfulness <clears throat> you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former you blind guides you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel matthew 23 25 oh to you teachers of the law and pharisees you hypocrites you clean the outside of the cup and dish but inside they are full of greed and self indulgence externally decorated but not inside your heart is full of filthy it is against god and the love of god likewise he brings in so many other things and accuse them blame them that you are not properly guiding the people you leaders of the society you are not properly leading <clears throat> one of the big examples to study how they were so legalistic <clears throat> and without law without kindness is the passage that was read to us luke chapter 7 verses from 36 to 50 36 to 50 jesus was invited to a house and there was a visitor whose name <clears throat> was not given here but it was mentioned as sinful woman luke 7 37 when a woman who had lived a sinful life in the town learned that jesus was eating at the pharisee's house she brought an alabaster jar of perfume and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping she began to wet his feet with her tears having seen this the host thinks himself what did he think if this man were a prophet if jesus was a prophet you would you would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is that she is a sinner now jesus having learned through his spirit now he wanted to explain the need of forgiveness the meaning of forgiveness the meaning of mercy love and faithfulness 
Jesus tells a small parable from verse 41, Luke 41, Luke 7, 41. Two men owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancelled. Which means, who owed 500 denarii? Must have been happier. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Now, Jesus wants to <clears throat> teach the piracy. There were three acquisitions Jesus brings out here. What are the three? Luke 7, verse 44. Do you see this woman? I came into your house you did not give me any water for my feet. This is a ceremonial, ritualistic thing. In all the Jewish houses, they used to have at, at least <coughs> jars kept outside their houses, filled with water to wash their feet. Jesus says, you invited me for a meal but you fail to wash my feet or give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Tears represent <laughs> confession. She was longing for forgiveness. But in fact, <clears throat> many witnessed how she used that costly perfume. Now, Jesus does not appreciate that perfume when he was talking about <clears throat> the first acquisition. You did not give me water, but she, she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Both from her own body. Nothing out of her body. Buying perfume needs money to buy from other sources. Tears comes from her eyes, and the hair belongs to her. With these two things, she confesses. Throughout these things, she did not utter a single word. She did not speak at all. And second one is that, you did not give me a kiss. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet, which means, again, submission. She was submitting herself to God. And finally, you did not put oil on my head. Normally, this is another custom to honor a guest by the Jewish community. They put oil, olive oil. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. All the three, water, <clears throat> or tears from her eyes. And again, kiss, perfume. Or all the three are on Christ's feet. Three kinds of submission.
were there. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much, but he who has been forgiven little loves little. Many people were there. Jesus used this occasion to interpret the meaning of laws and wanted to expose this legalistic community, that is, Pharisees, to all others who gathered there. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgiven. The other girls began to say among themselves, who is this who? Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Matthew chapter 26 says, wherever the gospel is preached, What this woman did would also be told. To that extent, Lord wanted to respect this woman's confession. She has become a model how to confess and how to reconcile with God and man. God exhibited his mercy, love, and highly regarded our faith. And that's why Matthew includes this word, this sentence, wherever the gospel is preached, what the woman, this woman did, would also be told. By saying so, Matthew wants to tell us it is a mandatory one. Those who preach the gospel to the communities, to the world, they should also tell how she confessed it, what was done by her. When Paul was <coughs> writing a letter to the Romans, he was telling, don't simply read, write, study the laws. You must put into practice. You must put into practice. And there are <clears throat> many commandments in the Old Testament, first five books. There are 613 commandments. Out of that, 248 were considered as positive and 365 are negative. Jewish proverb says, the beginning and the end of Torah is kindness. That is, beginning and the end of law is kindness. Without kindness, there is no use just reading the Torah are just reading the Bible and praying and reflecting upon the biblical truth. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for teaching us through the biblical truth and enabling us to realize the need of forgiveness and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.